Как? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Cabin Fever Podcast. I hope everyone's having a spectacular day. So Matt and I, we are back for another podcast. I don't know why, but inevitably we always end up talking about EDM or EDC. I don't know. It's, um, I think it's just, it's in our brains. It's definitely in my brain. So in today's podcast, we discuss the upcoming event, Beyond Wonderland, which is March 16th and 17th. That's Friday and Saturday at the NOS Events Center in San Bernardino. Buy your ticket now. Friday night is lit. <laughs> at 33 saying lit, I don't know, it's, it's still kind of funny. It was like when I was younger and saying sweet, sweet. <laughs> you hear that? Look at that, you hear that. That's live right now, me recording my intro, and it's raining right now. Well, well actually, it's, it's sprinkling. There are people on jet skis right now having a fun time, and it's sprinkled just enough to hit the rain sensor on my uh, fantastic fan. It's doing its job. Well, you know what? Just enjoy the podcast, sit back, relax, have a good old time. And you could find Cabin Fever Podcast on Instagram and Twitter at Cabin Fever Pod. And you can find myself, Sean Evans, at Sean Evans Photo. That's S E A N E V A N S P H O T O. That's where I'm posting all my photos. And uh, then, you, of course, you can find Matt Whitney at Tan and Blue Photo or Pac Matt at Tat Tat or Pac Matt. Please enjoy today's podcast. Checking in, checking, checking in. Oh, that sounds like sounds like magic. Magic. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> what is that from? What's that from again? Oh, ho, ho, it's magic. You know. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. He sings it. It's good, though. It it's good. Oh, we're back. We're back, everybody. Cabin Fever, live again from the party island. Van Fever. Van Fever. A little TGIF tradition. <laughs> <And> Matt, <laughs> Matt rides his bike all the way from work yes. to Fiesta Island to podcast and enjoy a beautiful sunset. Well, at least I can, and uh, he can... It's pretty Imagine amazing. it's amazing. People are, yeah, you know, they finish their work week. They're riding down here to the uh, Fiesta Party Island. Yep. And uh, what a view. That's amazing, though. It really it's is amazing. nice. It's just free to, I said it last time, but yeah, it really is. Come on, just just do the loop. If you're in San Diego, just come come and do the loop. And hang Absolutely. Out. If you're brave, I guess you can get in the water. But... <laughs> okay. I want to get in it now, but... No, it's fine. Unless you have a, a paddleboard or something good like that. Yeah, I saw sailboats down here on my ride. I saw some kayakers, some people fishing, a lot of bikers. It's just... Was... <laughs> Give me your hey, microphone. Take, take, take my mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sean's still living the life down here. Yeah, dude. Manning it up. We were just talking a lot about a lot of things coming up. 2018, it's kicked off. It's moving. Woo, woo, it is a hot hookah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I was I was being brave, but yeah, it's hot. <laughs> um, yeah, we're uh, you know well into February now, and uh, for us, for the uh, Cam Fever Pod crew, we're planning our uh, summer really, just trying to get things locked down. We got EDC coming up in less than a hundred days. Just hit the hundred day mark a couple days ago, 
And uh, God, I remember last year when it came to the 100 days, it was just like, holy shit, here it comes. We're, we're I, I mean, it seems like a long time, but it really it's not. It's it's going to be here before we know it. Oh, yeah. We're looking at the end of May this year. And the uh, lineup, I think, comes out at any time now. I, I, I rumored it was Valentine's uh, Day. That is the Reddit speculation. There's always like, wait, and people are always they're already trying to figure out, okay, which DJs are going to be playing what what um, uh, Vegas clubs, and then right. they could easily DC. hop on over uh, to EDC and play a set or two. So I mean, it's uh, it's a fun thing to kind of uh, speculate who's going to be there. But we know the big dogs, all all the awesome people are going to be there, but. Who exactly will be there? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think we could both agree we would love to see Eric Perez. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, I did get to see him, uh, which will be three, three years ago, two years ago, two years ago. 2016. 16, yeah. Yes. And I keep having to remind, I'm like, it's 2018 now. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. shit's flying by. Yeah, really. And, uh, yeah, I did get to see him. Uh, a guy in our, our crew, our fan band, Jamboree, uh, is a huge Eric Perez fan. And so I tagged along that year that I met him uh, to see Eric Perez. And I had an amazing time. And I didn't know anything about him. But, you know, you, uh, we're, late, we're late to the game, EDM. EDM uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. I, he's one amazing. He's putting together crazy, crazy stage shows. And so I'm hoping he didn't come last year. So I hope he's there this year for sure. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see who else is going to be there. Um, I think the 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 theorists on who might be there, he might be there Friday night, but I think he does have something going on in Europe, and there's something about him flying or something. Flying yeah. Mean, those, those headliners do that. Yeah, yeah, so you, you never know. It just amazes me sometimes, like especially like on New Year's, like how many sets these guys are playing. They go from one big show to another show to another show. You're just like, damn, you guys are just all over the place. I'm casting them chicks. Oh, my God. Having a, a party, though. Having a good old time. Yeah. It's crazy. It must be a, such a blur. Uh, lifestyle. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I posted this amazing preview of... Uh, Eric Perez's his new show that he's putting on and it just blows my mind like I couldn't I'm like that's real like I'm like just the way it was going like it's hard for me to like describe it to you because it's so insane yeah. the holographics just the the way the lights were moving up and down and like coming together in like a wave it was just like mind blowing and to see that live and rolling into uh, some good times and some good music i just couldn't imagine a more happy place to experience uh edm yeah and experience a good dj like eric perez yeah Whew. yeah I, I hope so fingers crossed oh yeah absolutely absolutely if not i would love to see him if he's here in san diego or in, even in la at some point i would definitely make the journey and on that too, we're also been talking about Burning Man. Ooh, Burning Man yes. Tickets are going on sale next month. Yep, next month. And we're, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go. Fingers crossed, everything oh, yeah. works out. I think it will. If there's a will, there's a way. Kind of Absolutely. Thing. But it'll be both our first times going with uh, some seasoned, uh, joining up some seasoned burners, uh, which would just be totally amazing. I mean, especially for a first time out. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Just so, just a lot of uh, a lot of planning to do. A lot of planning. A lot of pieces. Yeah. I think it's cool that EDC has moved up, and there's exactly a hundred days between EDC and Burning. Oh, that's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. So it's cool that they moved it up a little. gives gives you some time in between. To yeah. Re <laughs> re recover. Recover. Recoup. <laughs> uh, save and, money up. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. For like a pretty pretty fun filled summer. I'm definitely, I mean, is there a, a certain, hmm, I mean, Burning Man's like an experience into its own. Is there anything, though, because Sean, he's he's dug a lot deeper into it than I have, um, watching videos and stuff on that. Is there something maybe special you're looking forward to, or is it just kind of the overall 
experience. Well, definitely the overall experience, but to be honest, like I really am just excited to see all the different artwork that people are going to put together. Um, just knowing all the hard work that goes behind putting in, like all these giant wood structures people put together, or even just the smaller pieces that are just randomly set out on the playa, like just little things, like little details like that. I'm really excited just to see firsthand. Like it, it's nice to see on video and, and all that stuff, but to actually be there in person and, and to experience it and to see it up close and to touch it and to climb it and to be on it and just that shit I really really want to see and I'm excited for and and just the the dancing the you know riding around during the day on the playa or riding at night when it's a completely different place where there's art cars driving around all lit up and playing whatever kind of music as they just go from one place or another and and then just I, I guess I'm just the randomness of it and just right. like going on an adventure and then who, who knows where you might end up type of thing and i'm kind of stoked for that yeah the wonderment i i guess just of the the whole experience is r really enticing and, and exciting for me like i i i just can't i can't wait i'm right. just really so stoked for it that's what i think about too i think about all the different pieces and stuff that i've heard you know community wise art just the camping experience alone, the the bikes, you know, and so it'll be great to just ha like have the experience and then watch all those things kind of come together, and, and and then be living it, you know. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Good. All right. Cool. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty crazy. What about you? What do you What do you think you're most excited for? I think that's that's it. Like I like I'm saying like. Uh, just the pieces coming together in my mind. Yeah. You know, like the idea becoming reality. I'm excited to um, be a part of this like themed camp that we that we're we're talking about joining with our friend Sarah. Um, just because it's nice to join up with people that have done it and are familiar. And then I'm also excited, like like I was just talking about before we got on air. Uh, kind of planning out my vehicle and my camp setup stuff like that where it's just like okay i am gonna be surviving out here for a week you know like what am i gonna do to be comfortable and what am i gonna need to to survive and and stuff like that like a lot of times when i go camping and stuff it's like spur of the moment we're like all right throw some firewood in the car let's go you know and that's fun too because it's just the the impulsivity and stuff but like it's like this is like experience I really want to absorb. So it's like, I really want to plan it and be comfortable and not be stressed about it because I think all that work will be fruitful. Oh, absolutely. When it comes down to it, you know, and then you're just going to end up learning a ton by actually doing it. Oh, definitely. And, and that's such a big thing with Burning Man is just even just getting involved in the actual event itself. Uh, you know, with the steam camp, it gives us a shot to like, help entertain just random travelers as people walking by or people that just want to join in with our camp for a little bit and just hang out and then we can go to other people's camps and it just it just kind of slowly spreads out that this kind of uh just giving attitude i think because they don't really want you to barter there's no like you're not buying drinks you know anything like that people are just right. friendly they're I'm out there yeah, yeah they're passing out food you know they're uh, like it's it just such a different environment and I'm just excited just to explore that different way of thinking like 70,000 plus people becoming a city Black Rock City like becoming this collective of amazing people and unfortunately some shit heads are there too but it's just uh, I mean that comes with any large group of people um, but in the like you're saying like going to one of the most inhospitable areas in the world It's just a dry lake bed and it's this alkaline dust and it's like we're just planted and it's the the summertime, it's summertime. So it's hot. Yeah. It's it's not probably not gonna rain and if it does it might make things a little bit more difficult because now it's all muddy everywhere and I mean <laughs> who knows you know and then these these crazy dust storms that will bl blow through I'm actually looking forward to that you know that that might yeah. be <laughs> pretty sweet yeah I think so yeah yeah it's kind of like the monsoons rolling through the, uh, yeah the dude Yuma desert but man it's the uh, you're so right the adventure just the build up the the everything you, you're gonna learn as you're there and experience and see with your own eyes like that's for me, it's just so important to see these things and experience it with your own eyes and just to do it and just not 
for me, a lot of times, just watching these videos, like, it gets you excited and pumped up for it, but you just got to get out there and do it. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, I'm so stoked. And if you want to hear our first-timers uh, experience, go back and listen to uh, our old episode we did over the summer with Sarah when she got back from uh, Burning Man, and that was definitely, I should go back and listen to it. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, me too. To kind of relive it, because... Uh, I remember it was pretty damn cool. Yeah, that was a fun one. We did that in uh, up in Ramona in her backyard, and we just hung out outside, and it was a nice night, and she just laid out her amazing story and experience with Burning Man. It was a, it was a fun podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Go back Check it out. Me. Check it out. Sarah on the play. I forget which uh, oh, yeah. number it is. And uh, our boy Sean here, he is keeping the EDM groove moving. And he's going to be on Wonderland next month. It's almost a month away. Yeah, buddy, March I'm going... 16th and 17th uh, yep. at the NOS Events Center in San Bernardino. Yeah, bud. Uh, and this is put on by the same people as EDC, right? Exactly. So it's an insomniac event, so there's going to be a lot of uh, insomniac DJs that, you know, are kind of typically at their um, at their uh, festivals like EDC and... and uh, Nocturnal, I think, is an insomniac, and Countdown, and their big Halloween show and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm looking at the uh, lineup. Yep, I'm going to bring year. up the lineup right now as well. So, yeah, what do you see on there? Who would you really want to see uh, if you were going to Beyond Wonderland? Well, looking at the, the the bigger acts, the main... Yep. The ones I'm familiar with, at least, uh, I would definitely want to see Seven Lions. Yep. We saw them at Circuit Grands at EDC last year. They're our friend Katie's uh, favorite act. And uh, that was just like a stunning show. One that I just, you know, went to accompany everyone and just was just blown away by the music. So definitely, definitely him. Uh, and then Tiesto is playing again, too. And obviously that's always a good time, a guaranteed good time. And uh, you know what? I've got Tiesto on my maybe, so it depends on the lineup when yeah. it comes to the Mad Hatter Castle stage. So depending on lineups and things like that, I may or may not see it Tiesto just because I just saw him at New Year's Eve. Right. And right. then saw him at, also saw him at EDC. But yeah, you you really can't go wrong with Tiesto. Oh, I see Floster Domus. Uh, yeah, got Floster on my list. Yeah. Absolutely. That was another great, Hell yeah. great show we saw oh, last year. Oh, surprisingly. Well,. For me, last year EDC, I was just like, let's just go for the ride. ED or I'm going to let Katie, she's going to Sherpa us through all the craziness of EDC, and she took us some Class A DJ and had a great time at Floster. Yeah. Uh, and then I was telling Sean before we got started, uh, this Cheshire Woods stage, uh, Baiju, uh, was a really fun, funny type of... Uh, or artist I was into, he was on the EDC Insomniac playlist leading up to last year's EDC, and I didn't actually catch him there, but um, he was a fun. I, I enjoyed his music. That's you know where you go to just maybe chill out for a while and dance a little bit. It's not like too crazy. And I do plan on visiting. Yeah, there's uh, Caterpillar Gardens and then Cheshire Woods, and I'm assuming those are the smaller stages and more house music, music and techno and things like that. And I would definitely plan on visiting those stages throughout the night just to just like you're saying just take a break maybe from uh the crazy bass and dubstep and stuff so like that Mad Hatter's Castle more of the bass driven uh stage yeah 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 that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking yeah because uh yeah Kill the Noise is going to be playing there all these big uh like uh Midnight Ty uh Tyrannosaurus is going to be playing there uh Bass Rush Experience uh, uh Black Tiger Sex Machine yeah, all those uh, really heavy, heavy artists are definitely gonna be playing there. So Kid is one of the headliners of Clean Domain, and you yep. saw him at New Year's. So is that? Like oh yes, he's there? yeah, absolutely on my list to go check out. Yeah, I've really enjoyed him at uh, at the OMFG event. He was really good live. So yeah, he's definitely on my list. And then um, let's see. Yeah, and then I want to see Kazo. Definitely down to see him again. And he was at the OMFG event as well. And then uh, Rehab, he's really good. Uh, kill, I don't know if I mentioned Kill the Noise. I'm going to check him out. I, I really like w with Beyond Wonderland, like some people were complaining about the lineup, which I totally get. I understand that. Like I would have liked to, if, like if Rez was there, or Alice in Wonderland or San Holo or something like that, like I would totally be down to, 
you know, see those guys. But for me, I'm like, I'm ty- I'm kind of excited just to see some people that I, I've never seen before. And I've uh, been going on the Reddit, like, they've got the Beyond Wonderland subreddit. And, um, yeah, just kind of, like, conversing with some people. Uh, actually, quite a few people are going solo, so I'm hoping to meet up with uh, some, you know, the Reddit group or whatever there. And then uh, hopefully oh, hit up some stages. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. There's cool. yeah quite a few few solo people or people that are going as couples that just want to meet up in a larger group. So I'll probably meet up with some of those people throughout the the two days. And then oh, um, so yeah, hopefully look up some you know check out some new artists or just go with them and see uh, uh, you know party to something like Tiesto or something like that. Seven, definitely, I've, I mean Seven Lions. I'm definitely want to see, and I've heard really good things about uh, Valentino. Con, uh-huh. I've heard that he puts on a really good show, so I'll probably see him uh, Saturday night. So they put out the two day, like Friday Saturday lineup, and Friday night is going to be stacked. So there's going to be a lot of these big acts that are going to be playing Friday night. So I'm really stoked for that. And then Saturday, I'm kind of looking forward to as well. So I'm, it kind of opens up my schedule. I'm able to, you know, check out some new artists and float around. But I'll probably be at the Queen's Domain, the main stage, and then Mad Hatter's Castle quite a bit. Just bumping between those two stages, depending on lineups and all that stuff. Is it a like what time does it start? I think it's I think, I think it starts at five. I think it goes okay. from five to two. Okay. Something like that, yeah. So I'll probably get there early. You know, yeah. I'm planning on taking the van, so I'm probably going to head up early Friday and then just get up there and see if I can get in the parking lot and just get a good spot and just get ready and wait till it starts and just walk right in and have oh, yeah. a good old time. Yeah. What I love about this too, I can bring in my Camelback, don't have to worry about buying water. We got all the, just like EDC, they got the free refill stations and stuff like that. So I'll be good to go on water, yeah. be nice and hydrated. And Yeah, it shouldn't be too bad yeah. temperature-wise either. Yeah, right, exactly. You know? Yeah, pick up a... Uh, I think, you know, they got pizza and all that stuff and eventually get some food and have a good old time. So if I've been to that event, NOS Event Center before. Right, they yeah. Have, they have a big outdoor area, which I'm assuming will have a bunch, most of the stages. And then there is a big indoor facility, mm. too, where at least the festival I went to had another stage in this big dome oh, area. Oh, so really? There's, there's going to be one of these stages. Probably one of the bigger ones. I'm right, assuming. yeah. Probably the Mad Hatter's Castle. Probably just to separate even like noise. Do you yeah, think? I mean, like, it's just a if it's that small, yeah. You know, vibe and vibe yeah. and environment. Right. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, they'll make use of that and it'll yeah. be a good old time going on in there. Ah, oh, it's gonna be so yeah. fucking awesome! And I can't wait. And from what I understand about Beyond Wonderland too, it's you know, it's all Alice in Wonderland themed, so it's right. Like, yeah. Very decorated as such you know, yeah and that should of... be kind of it'll be different it'll be pretty sweet and then like for me it's, it'd be weird just to like experience you know during the daylight a little bit some of these acts so that'd be pretty sweet yeah i think yeah. so definitely god that's so cool but yeah i'll definitely be posting uh photos through the uh, uh cabin fever pod on instagram i'll be posting videos and pictures and stuff like that when i get there but yeah, man, I'm so excited now. Now that I actually know what the lineup is going to be, I'm getting, I'm like starting to plan it out a little bit more. And then, you know, I'm sure down the road we'll get like actual like set times and stuff like that, so I can really figure out where I want to be throughout the these two days and yeah. uh, hopefully meet up with some cool people. And then, Dude, I'd say definitely do that. I mean, I even want to do the, uh, you know, Reddit meetup for EDC this year. Oh, I definitely it's a want huge to. Group yeah, and absolutely. Just fun uh, thing to be a part of. Yeah. During the year when you're, you know, you're not there. And, I'm sure you're going to meet a lot of crossover people too. That oh, for sure. End up yeah. going to EDC, which is fucking badass. You know, it's just really, really brings out you know people that don't know about these events. You know, or maybe just don't think it's kind of silly or whatever. Like, right? I, I definitely used to think. <laughs> um, it really brings Me too, out dude. <laughs> fun people, like yeah, people that are just down to have a good time and dance and stuff like that. And it's just a really warm and like welcoming experience more than i've experienced at any other kind of uh you know festival generally people that like enjoy music come together at festivals and it's awesome you know? yes but, uh, i don't know i like to think that these edm events kind of just takes it to the next level a little bit absolutely so it's like i think it lessens the uh maybe like social anxiety of meeting people for the first time because everyone's kind of like kind of on the same wavelength you know and i think people that aren't or can't get into it or just 
drink a lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Get kind of pushed to the wayside, you know. Yeah. At least, uh, and that's just my experience. Oh so yeah. I'm about to go to my fourth EDC. <laughs> right. <laughs> Totally agree. Totally agree. They've gotten so much of my money. <laughs> <laughs> but so many good memories, right? Yeah, some very good memories. Yeah, hell yeah. We're just trying to lock down our lodging situation for EDC this year. Right. It's like, it's, I just, you know, it'll happen. I know it'll happen. Yeah. And stuff, but I just it'll come together. It'll happen yeah. like now, and so I'm not thinking about it. But yeah, that's like my only. Because uh, this year, you know, it's supposed to be a lot better as far as commuting to the venue and stuff like yep. that. And like we've talked about before, regardless of how the commute goes, you just got to be zen about it. You got to know what you're getting into when you're getting into it. It's like people are going to be dickheads and they're going to try to cut the line, the traffic, and they'll wreck their cars and <laughs> do anything to get there before you. And, you know, it just comes to better planning, leaving earlier, and yep. being along for the ride, especially the first day. Absolutely. Everyone just fucking hyped to the extreme. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, even for me, I feel like I'm just going to be so much more prepared now. Like, I really, the for me, the first year was just like, oh, my God, what the fuck did I get myself into? This is crazy. The insanity of it took a few years off. You guys went, talked me back in, and then last year was just, now I get it. This is yeah. amazing. Now I understand. And then now this year, I'm locked and loaded. I'm ready. I can't be more excited. I'm, I put a countdown on my phone knowing yeah. that you have a countdown. Now I'm like, every day I'm like, okay, we're getting a little bit closer, just yeah. a little bit closer. And it just, I, I think people should go if solo. If you feel like you don't have a crew and you can afford to go, find a cheap hotel or something like that, definitely go solo because you will find somebody. And if you're into the music, It'll t it'll bring you to somebody. Yeah, that you, yeah, really. When you true. if you're rocking on the same level to Seven Lions, you'll find someone that's rocking at the same level to Seven Lions or whatever it might be. Maybe you're the bass pod for seventeen hours the the entire weekend or something like that. Like there are people out there. Like just go. You have to experience it. Even if you feel like you're too old for something like that. You don't think that way. Like, I had that mindset when I was in my mid-20s. Like, I'm too old for raves. And now I'm 33. We're both 33. Yeah. I'm going to my third one. You're going to your fourth one. And we're... <laughs> and I'm going to Beyond Wonderland. And I'm going to see Dat Sick at the end of the month. So I'm like, I'm I'm in, man. Like, I'm having a good time. Like, it, not that I think that it's, like, keeping me young or anything like that. It's just... It's just something... To keep me motivated and excited and want, wanting to work out, you know, feeling good and, and yeah. being healthy even just to go to these all-night events and, and, you know, not breaking a hip or something or <laughs> hurting, like pulling a muscle or something, you yeah. know, or being too exhausted to like, you know, enjoy a, a eight-hour event that goes till two or four in the morning or something like that. I wonder if that they have to, they must have to shut it down at two because I'm like, that almost seems early. I know. I wish it yeah. went to four, but it's got to be sound restrictions or something. I, I have no idea. Like, what's the surrounding area like? Is it, like, in the middle of San Bernardino? I don't think I've ever actually been up there before. I don't know where it is in San Bernardino, but I remember it being in sort of, like, an industrial area. Right. Okay. I don't remember, like, a ton like, houses and neighborhoods. Sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, right, so good to know. Where do you, um, so you're going to be camping out, but... Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm still kind of up in the air. I'm thinking uh, I might just, um, there's a 24-hour fitness somewhat nearby. I don't know if I can get away with uh, bumming around there for a few hours, you know, and catching some Zs and then taking a shower and then uh, heading back over for the second day type of thing. Or It is an industrial area. It's, it's maybe like a mile and a half, two oh, miles maybe. Nothing. I could even, see really I'm just like worried about because they warned everybody about like parking around that area because yeah. it might be you can flip that up if you want. Oh, cool. Oh, can you push the I'll edit. I'll edit all this. Sorry, is it... No, no. I don't know. It, I think it's this longer cord. I got to get a It just keeps uh I know a lot about But yeah, I could if you want and then just make sure it locks. Yes. Yeah, we're good. Cool. This pants just has everything. <laughs> Um, I actually just started using that because I'm like, I don't have any counter space. I'm like, oh, yeah. Brilliant. Click it up. Now I have counter space. It's a beer there. table, man. It's a beer table. Yeah, oh, no, I, I, I'm planning on it. I, I cleared out my computer, so I'm good to go. 
Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Do you ever, I mean, do you go on Google Maps now and look at the terrain? Yes, I do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I did. I do that for driving. Yeah, I preemptively looked up, like, the surrounding area beyond Wonderland, uh, just trying to get a feel for it, because I've got this camper van, so, you know, depending on the streets and all that, the, you know, if they have signs up saying no parking overnight between this time and this time, you know, it can be a bit of a hassle, but, but if I'm parked in the beyond Wonderland parking lot, for until two and then depending on parking restrictions if i find an area i can just post up for a little bit and then i can just park somewhere nearby yeah. l- legally for the day and just sleep and then um whenever they open up the parking lot again for the second night i'll just head on over oh, and, and then find a good spot there and then just kind of maybe chill for a little bit and get dressed and ready and then head on in yeah i don't i mean i don't obviously don't know how it'll be for that event but i remember we had to park pretty far away oh is there and it was see uh, that's what i was wondering like a is parking lot we parked oh i mean i'm just saying for what we okay made, i'm i had a su- they were definitely charging for parking okay so that's I, w- I went up there for like a rock festival and i happened to score free tickets from this random person i met online very very weird but he some guy i don't even know some group on facebook was like hey i have two tickets to this festival uh if anyone wants them i messaged him he's like you're the only one that messaged me and i was serious and he mailed me the tickets and it wow. was fucking cool um but we ended up not wanting to pay for anything yeah and then um because yeah they were definitely charging a lot for parking so we parked on the streets it definitely was industrial now i remember because we walked a long way but it was like the middle of the day it was fucking hot it was a miserable show experience for us yeah just yeah because of the heat the day the crowd they were not ready for as many people there were just lines out the fucking wazoo we waited all we waited in line for like over an hour to get beer we made some friends in line it was fun we got to the front of the line and that's when they had one little tiny sign that said cash only oh what? And we were just like you gotta be fucking kidding me Oh. My friend held this space. I ran to an ATM where they wanted $9 to pull out money. And I said, fuck that. I flipped off the machine. <laughs> and I was like, let's go. We ended up dipping out early. It was kind, oh, of, kind of a bummer. Jesus. Because we were so hungry and so, like, wanting, you know, we were just out of it by then. It was just like, this is not worth it. So, anyway, don't let my negative experience. <laughs> I'm sure th- they've been doing this show. That, that was the first year of this particular event. Beyond Wonderland has been going on a long time. I'm sure they got their decks in a row. I'm just saying they're probably charged for parking in the at the venue because there is a big parking lot. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They did say it was up to because I looked. At, I went onto the onto that the venue's website and they just said it's up to whoever's holding the event right. when it comes to parking. And Insomniac, like EDC, they don't charge for parking. Right. So I was fingers crossed that they don't charge parking for Beyond Wonderland. We'll see. We'll see. Um, if they do charge, then I, I might just make the trek and then find a somewhat decent parking area and yeah. just fucking walk. Yeah, just why not? Uh, exactly. I mean, I won't mind. I, I really don't think so. I mean, I just want my van to be in a safe area, and yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, so you bought tickets right when they went on sale? I did, yeah. So <laughs> not even you? knowing what yeah. who was playing or anything like that. It was actually not bad for because it's it was about the same price that we paid for one night at OMFG, uh-huh. and now I get that's how I justified it. I'm like, okay, I get two nights for the same price. What, what was it, like one thirty oh, with all like with all the like tacked on fees yeah. and bullshit. So not too bad, not too bad. Well, so what, what was Oh, so, on? yeah, so, like, it's, like, 140-ish, one, okay. yeah, somewhere in that range, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah so, not, bad not too bad. What, no. what is that, like, 75 a night, 80 bucks a night? So, yeah. Some, you, no, that would be, like, 160 or something like that, but, yeah, it's it's in that range, yeah. Right. So, not too bad. I'm just wondering. Mm-hmm. If I could score some free tickets, I'll... Uh, d- uh, dude, yeah, I mean... I'll give you some Yeah, I was hoping the single-day tickets would have been cheaper, but they're like 100 bucks for yeah. like a single day. I would say Friday night would be the night to go, though. All the big acts are playing. TSO, Seven Lions. Uh, if you're into like Dash Berlin, like I think... No, Alesso's playing Saturday night, but a bunch of the, the big main acts are playing Friday. For whatever reason, I don't right. know why. Why no, they I'm stacked looking, it up. I'm looking forward to your... Yeah. You know oh, I mean? and Saturday is St. Patrick's Day too, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm planning cool. on wearing green, and I'm you know I'm gonna do it all yeah. out. I'm gonna have fun that day. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. Uh, no, I'm I'm looking forward to you going. 
rolling solo. Yep. It'll be a totally different experience. Exactly. Like, I'm glad to hear that you're doing the meetups and stuff too, because I really think that's just gonna open up the experience even more. And Absolutely. Like, who knows? You know, you'll meet some really. Fun that's people. really what I'm hoping. Like those people that meet at at raves and stuff, they will continue meeting up for years. Like, yes. When I was toting around with with uh, Katie two years ago, I mean, we met up with a couple and. You know, it was like they were longtime friends, and they they literally had met at, in EDC years ago, and yeah. just, just meet up every time they're all there, and and they that couple just happened to be getting married at EDC that year we went to, and so we got to like see them get married and stuff like that. But it was just like they call them the rave families. You know, they, this is what you do: you just kind of meet up, and you know, you dance the night away, and then you like probably add each other on Facebook. And uh, absolutely, yeah, and then we'll see you at the next event <laughs> yeah, type exactly. of thing. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's pretty cool. It's. And you've seen um, under, I think it's called Under the Electric Lights, and I think they just. I have not seen it. Oh, it's on Netflix now. Yeah, you got to check gotta it out. Watch Please it. watch it. It's yeah. it's kind of corny, but it still gets you pumped up for EDC, and you, and it kind of gives you an idea of the the spectrum of type of people that go to this huge event that is just. It's just amazing. You just got to be there and witness it for yourself, type of thing. Yeah. yeah, really cool. Definitely recommend that Under the Electric Sky. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, Netflix. Someone was just talking about it on the EDC Reddit page, and yeah. I was like, yeah, that's right, I still haven't watched it yet. So Tonight, Matt. Definitely Tonight. will do that. Yeah. yeah. I should. Um, yeah, that's so fucking cool, man. I, I'm happy for you. Yeah, man, I'm really looking forward to it. Like, for me, just the whole experience with uh, the New Year's Eve, it, it was bummed that you guys, I was really bummed that you guys had to leave, but I totally understand. People were sick, you got to go. Yeah. And then I had a really good time by myself. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm here alone. Here we go. But I'm rolling. I'm having a good time. I'm surrounded by a bunch of fun people. And, right. and I just started to... You know, connect with people, and then you know when the train of people go by, I just started saying instead of like getting irritated, I'm just yeah. like Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy. Oh, cool. If you need to pass me by, Happy New Year. Yeah, you yeah. know, a lot of high fives, some hugs, and stuff like right. that. So just getting into yeah, it. just get into yeah. it, having a good time, like really just actually embracing that that rave culture, the true like plur. Which when I first heard the plur thing, to be honest, I was just like, oh, that's a little silly. <laughs> that's a little silly you trade like bracelets and shit but I now that, I get it I I'm the, now I get it EDC last year yeah too, yeah you like you made these like little sides like why do people wear this shit? yeah yeah <laughs> you're like on Amazon yeah, yeah no I'll, I'm like beads how do I buy them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tutorials <laughs> on uh, <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> I want to be just covered like my entire arm. Oh, but yeah, now I get it. it. Now I understand it. Like I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. There's a whole like subculture that goes behind like the whole candy, you know, exchanging of candy and the plurring and everything. Yeah, it's uh, not yeah. empty. It's yeah, not, it's not empty. It's yeah, not a show. Yeah, it's not a show at all. And that's what I'm like. What is this, what is this going on yeah. here? And that was just me being not, I guess, just not open to it at the time. And now I'm like, oh, I okay, I'm, I get it. This is awesome. This is I'm so glad this is actually here. I, I, you know, I like that that's going on. It's so sweet. It's badass. It is cool. It's definitely a fun thing to be part of for sure. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just uh, yeah, when I'm like working out or I just want to like pick me up, yeah, I'll just throw on a set from last year. And oh yeah. Like, vibe out for a little while you know it's cool yeah i love just youtubing live sets even from uh different events like uh ultra in miami or tomorrowland or or uh, definitely a bunch of edc and there's you know other uh festivals and things like that like uh i last night i just listened to um excisions lost lands set that oh, was yeah. like an hour and a half or something it was just a was complete set of insanity thing, right? and amazing yeah he put that put okay. that show on and so I commend just, him. Like yeah. he is, he's doing work. And now he did this whole tour, the whole paradox thing. Like, I and they had it at the uh, San Bernardino thing. And I, and now I'm kind of bummed we didn't go. But it just felt like it was so close to from New Year's Eve yeah. to when they were going. I definitely on. would have postponed New Year's for that. I mean, I, uh, looking back now, right? Outside, yeah. I mean, that's like a, a stacked event, stacked, and just. Uh, Maybe uh, definitely worth downing a couple of monsters beforehand, or a lot of caffeine, <laughs> because that's yeah, a high that's e- high that's energy event right there. 
Yeah. Yeah. So do you think uh, Dantzik's show will be s- similar to that? Oh, definitely, absolutely. Okay. And and the the la- the the artist leading up to him, like uh, there's Space Jesus. I definitely recommend him. He's like real funky, like crazy cool EDM music. Like I definitely recommend him. Um, and uh, artist named Carbon. And there's one more guy. Damn it, I can't believe I'm slipping on him. But they're all really good. Hard style, like uh, dubstep oh, okay. stuff. So it's like really good. Yeah, it's going to be high energy I shit. I need to get over the fact that it's at Soma. Because it just keeps bothering I'm a little disappointed it's at Soma and as well. And I'm worried it's going to be super fucking hot. It's going to be, room. yeah, it's going to be just like it was <laughs> when we were yeah. 15, 16. <laughs> like, I remember almost dying during, you know, certain shows. They're going to have one time. door open on on the yeah. side and it's going to just be... And it's going to be smokers. Yes, like, yeah. Smoke pouring in front of it. <laughs> exactly. I, I think it, it's it. I'm like this would be a perfect act for the observatory, but maybe like you were, you guys mentioned that they had some problems with their alcohol license, so maybe yeah, they're shut down right now. Yeah, yeah, so I'm like maybe that's why he couldn't do it at the observatory or maybe. another event. Like, I think House of Blues probably would have been too small for him to do yeah. his event there, but the observatory would have been perfect. Damn. Ah, but yeah, Soma. All right, Soma is this old little. Movie punk theater. venue yeah old old movie theater like one room or two room movie theater like a small room and a big room and it's... Well, no 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 you know the the main room of uh-huh. soma was actually a bunch of theaters they just knocked out the wall oh. so to make a big room okay oh and you, you, know, you can tell when you go in you can see all the projection room windows of the you're right you're right yeah okay out. yeah and then yeah there's a side stage which was just one movie theater but yeah, I don't even know how old. And it, it's in a strip mall. Like you really don't even know it's there. And it's adjacent to our sports arena, which yep. is a very old, storied arena that hosts. He hockey, probably could have even done like pretty well in the in the sports yeah, arena. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun, cool. yeah. But uh, yeah, Sean and I, you know, well before we knew each other, we were going to shows there all the time. Even my my buddy Nick, who does our cabin fever uh, at the intro. Show? Cabin fever. Cabin, cabin, cabin fever. Yep. Um, was going to shows there all the time before we all knew each other. Yep. Um, but yeah, like, especially in the early 2000s, if you were going to, like, any punk or in, indie kind of shows, you were at Soma. That was the place to go. Uh, I was there, like, at least once a month. For uh, easily. A, couple, a good few years, two or three years. Oh, yeah. There was always good shows coming in there, side stage, main stage, I mean fun and then when you get older and you start like going to other venues you realize oh wow soma is just like a kind of a shithole oh yeah and they, their sound is not good no but when you're young and you're just ex- so excited to see the band that you've been waiting months to come to town it was just uh one of those experiences that i look back very fondly on like i'm so glad i got to that i just did something like that you know because uh you just get a little more connected to the music i guess and all right, let me ask you, because I, I have one show that really sticks out in my mind that I had just such a fucking amazing time seeing seeing this band live at Soma. Do you have a band that you could yes. say? Uh, okay, what what is it? And then well, I'll say mine. Well, mine was more about the experience I okay, had yeah. seeing this band, because yeah. I'll, I'll just give a quick setup. I had been going to Soma for a, a couple years by that point, so I kind of knew the drill. And uh, this band I had seen a few times, but now they had just blown up crazy yellow card. Oh. And at the time, I was hanging out with uh, a bunch of friends that I'd made working at one of my first jobs at Albertsons. And, um, Would this bit them in like Ocean Ave times? Yes. Okay. Oh, so it was yeah. one of those things where it was like, I'd known about Yellow Card, I'd been listening to it for a while, I'd seen them a few times. They released Ocean Avenue, it blew up. Yeah. All of a sudden, like, everybody kind of knows about them. And they were coming to town at Soma. Well, so my coworkers, who, who usually didn't go to shows at all, were like, we want to go see Yellow Card, blah, blah. And I was like, hell yeah, let's go. You know, I'm fully down. And so it was at Soma. And it was just super fun going with them who don't go to those kind of shows because it's just, you know, if you... If you've never been to like a smaller show, it's 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 an event. You know, there's no seats. Everyone's just, uh, right, and people are moshing and just doing all this crazy stuff. And like, I didn't know how they were gonna react to it, but they were having like the best time. And then my friend, who I took, um, was uh, very a lot taller than all of us, and it was the first time I ever crowd surfed because a human totem. Yeah, those tall got, guys. Because we got <laughs> all separated in the mix or whatever. And I remember I found him in the crowd, and it was like we're. Ha- we're both like, yeah, this is great. And he's like, 
he just like threw me up and I crowd surfed to the front Fuck and stuff like yeah. that. And it was just like even me, all the shows I'd been to, I'd never even done that before and I was just like it was just uh, such a fun memory. So just picture a young Matt Whitney on a place on ocean <laughs> <laughs> and then he's just floating again. Yes! Yeah, pretty much. Do I still have my wallet? Yeah. Yes! And security guard never forget grab me and just grabs you and throws you, throws you on the ground, the ground. And then they kick yeah. you a couple of times like get the fuck out of here. And you're like, okay. I, I'm already running to the side but they still yeah. push you. Oh yeah, yeah. Get, get, get the here. fuck out of here. <laughs> and so, but I've seen, I mean, I saw and I'm pretty sure you were at that show Fallout Boy played the side stage at, at, uh, at Soma before just in the beginning of the fall but i mean they're touring arenas still i mean that blows my mind I mean, oh yeah and i saw this band the matches who were like crazy big for like two years and they played their set got cut off and they played acoustic songs in the parking lot for everybody what? that was a really fun oh my show. god so yeah anyway i could go on <laughs> all right so this is kind of it it's not your normal band it's it's Maybe a little jokey, but I saw the band The Darkness there. Holy Exactly. Yeah. Holy shit. It, yes, yeah. right in that time frame. And that show was fucking insane. Literally insane. Uh, uh, like, jam-packed in there. There's no, like, you're just moving with the crowd. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, going yeah. left, you, you gotta go left. You're going right, you're going right. You're going forward, you're going forward. Oh, real close, like okay. right. He's like, I don't believe in nothing called love. It's just, it's right, and yes, exactly. Yeah, his man. leotard, his shiny <laughs> leotard, and everything. It's so packed. There, there are people on the sides. Like I don't know what they're standing on, but they're standing on a ledge or something. And there's chicks flashing. I'm oh. seeing tits at Soma for the first okay, time. Yeah, I'm just like, holy that. shit! That's like awesome. it was just the energy there was just palpable. The the crowd was just insane for all these crazy like throwback songs, and it it was just fun. Just yeah. a fun, fun show, and yeah, that's that that's that cool. show just stands out in my mind. It's just such a good time, yeah. so great. But uh, like I said, so many great shows. I remember seeing um, uh, Boys Night Out, Ar oh, Armor right. for Sleep, and a couple, uh, maybe a couple of other bands too. Right, right along in that, like they were touring together, and I remember that being just, I it just blew my mind. And those were two bands I'd never really heard of before but once i heard them live i'm just like i'm hooked like i'm yeah. buying their albums and i'm still a fan of both those bands today unfortunately they don't really tour boys night out kind of i guess just toured but you know that was the era where i'd wait for a band to come to town and they'd be headlining but i would show up at the beginning of the show to see the openers because yes are, there was like some gem amongst these openers that's the first time i ever listened to the band hit the lights which are a pop punk band that are still out, still releasing like really good music, but they were opening, and I don't, I don't even remember the band I came to see, but they opened the show, and I was like, just blown away by like how goddamn catchy this band was. Yeah, dude. And you know, then you become like a lifelong fan. So it was just, it, I definitely lived for those moments where you, you didn't know what you were going to get with some of these two packages. Absolutely. It would just like really just killed it. Yeah. All seen at this dank dark shitty yeah. like gum stained concrete blood stained sweat stained yeah. stinky ass little venue sure near the sports were arena used to it too. oh yeah like, they were just, yeah these well, shows bands yeah are always so stoked to play san diego oh yeah it's just beautiful here. And they're probably coming from the midwest or the east coast and it's just <laughs> yeah. like all of a sudden they're in paradise and stuff yep. and it's just like it's crazy that that was the days before social media because nowadays you you'd probably have like you know, you'd be following the bands on Instagram, and they'd probably be posting beach pics and whatever like shenanigans they oh, get for into. Oh, for sure, day, yeah. But, like you really didn't know until, you know, you just—I don't know. There was something more magic. Uh, there was more of a, a mystery, I guess. You oh just no, didn't know what you were gonna get. Totally agree. Yeah. Good times there. Uh, maybe Great it'd be times. fun to go back to so much. Uh, the right. La last time I was there was 2014, and I saw uh, my favorite. One of my favorite bands. Every time I die, I play mm. this stage. And for a while, when they'd come to town, that's pretty much all the place they would play. So you know, I went there to see them. But that was a few years ago, so it'd be fun to go back. Yeah, where where would they normally play now? Probably Observatory or it House sucks. of Blues or when something. When they come to town now, they've been getting on bigger bills, oh. but they're opening. So oh, last okay, time they gotcha. Observatory, and they're gonna be here this month. 
playing at House of Blues, but they're opening, so uh, I kind of like... You don't want to go for their... Just the, who are they playing with? Motionless and White. I don't know. They're like a metalcore band. They all wear makeup. It's just not my thing. Right, yeah. It's just hard. It's hard to like... Justify. Want to go see them open. Yeah. Because they're not going to play as long of a set. Yeah. It's not their show, really. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. And it's like... And then there's... Now I'm thinking about economics too. Oh you know, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. When you got these big, these for? big events yeah. coming up and stuff. Like, yeah. This year the, is the last Warp tour. And that so, might be worth seeing because I yeah. had some great memories of that Warp tour we're, in Chula I'm Vista. Going yeah. Because the past two years, the Warp tour has come to San Diego at the end of the tour, which is hot August. Uh, yeah. Burning asphalt, humid August. The years before that, they were playing in June, which is way better weather. This it's still year, hot, but not still like hot. sweltering. Yeah. yeah, when you're out in a fucking parking lot, yeah. surrounded with a bunch of sweaty people. So this year, San Diego's like the second or third stop. It's in June. It's the last one. Dude, I'm remind, go. count me in, bro. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, I, 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 especially if this is the last one, I'm definitely down for that. Yeah. And you know the lineup's going to be One last hoorah. Oh, I hope killer. so. Yeah, dude. So, I'm definitely going. All right, cool. Because yeah. I do need to mix it up. I got to see <laughs> yeah. some rock, man. I got to yeah. see some live you know, music being played in front of yeah, me. Yeah, it's still, you know, it's a good time. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, are you done with music? Uh, I, yep. I want to transition real quick. Absolutely, bro. If, if we have the time. Definitely. I just want to, Sean went out to the desert to take pictures uh, of the... I've got it on my book okay, right cool. here. Yeah, I just wanted to hear All right, so yeah, I uh, I took a venture out to Ocotillo, uh, Painted Gorge, the same area we uh, did Mushrooms mm -hmm. back in November for the uh, Beaver Moon. So I went out for the... That was the Beaver Moon? That was the Beaver Moon. I'm sure you mentioned it. I just uh, Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's another layer. Yeah. So cool. And then so uh, I recently went out for uh, the Super Blue Blood Moon. So uh, the Blue Moon is the second full moon of the month. Right. And the Blood, is, blood Moon is for... Because it's actual uh, lunar eclipse. So it, it turns this uh, orangish red color, which is pretty badass. Um, so basically, I went out there um, almost on a whim. Like I, I, I actually thought it was the night later, like the day, like a day you were late. later or something. But uh, I met up with Sarah, and she's like, "Oh no, it's going on tonight." I'm like, "What? It's going on tonight?" So f I uh. kind of just like after I I left uh, meeting up with her, I'm like, "Well, should I just head out?" now and it was probably like two two in the afternoon i'm like well fuck it yeah why not gassed up filled up the tanks got everything ready and i just headed on out and it's about it's like an hour i would say two hour drive just in the van slow and go type of thing yeah and then so i'm like fuck it i'm just gonna head out i'm gonna go post up find a good spot and uh just watch the moon rise and then uh eventually have it turn into the the lunar eclipse all right, so I get out there, find a good spot, kind of near where we uh, had parked before. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, it was pretty close. I, I did get there like when the sun was going down, so I wasn't quite sure, but it, it looked like the same area. I felt like it was the same area. So just posted out, parked my van, found a good spot. The moon started coming up. It was full. It was bright. It looked amazing. Got some great shots of that. And then uh, the lunar eclipse didn't even start till like 2.30 in the morning. So I think I got like one or two hours of sleep, just kind of just laid in the back and then set my alarm and then got up. And then right as it's starting, I just, I, like I took maybe like 500 pictures that night. Like so many goddamn photos. Wow. Just it, it, That's trying to perfect it, trying to get it as crisp, yeah. trying to, you know, actually capture what I'm seeing visually onto like digital film format it's uh -huh. so hard sometimes to do that especially with night photography so yeah i took a shit ton of photos basically captured the the whole progression of it as it's going and then as it's still red it's the you know the moon's still moving through the sky it's still like in like as it's setting it it, it was so amazing as it's setting it's like going over this this mountain ridge it just looks so badass, and so many people commented like on my Instagram photos, like Tatooine or like Star uh, Wars, or people oh, have just mentioned wow, yeah. it looks like looks right. like that 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 type of feel to it. But yeah, I just got these amazing photos of the lunar eclipse. It's this 
this amazing celestial event that only occurs i think i think it happened 150 years ago when it is the the super blue blood moon like right. this this combination this like uh weird just everything worked out perfectly type of thing but yeah man uh, it was amazing being out there, but there were times where I was like a little freaked out just being really? out there by myself. Just a little bit because I was literally the only one out there. That's what I was just going to ask. Like I was yeah. uh, thinking like, oh, maybe, you know, it was close to the weekend. Maybe there's going to be some people out there that are, you know, doing motorcycles or whatever yeah. people do out there. And I was literally the only one out there. And, I'm, and I was just like looking around. I'm like, okay, no one's around. Oh, all so right, this is was, cool. Was this it cool. like, was the area like lit up? Though? It was, yes. Okay. At a time, it was like so bright. And then it was so weird as it as the eclipse started to happen, how dark and weird. Like the, the oh, it was just weird. Yeah. Chills. Yes. Like just yeah. being out there by myself, I'm just like, oh, it's so dark now. It's so yeah. like different than like even like two or three hours beforehand when it was just so bright. You can literally see just like, um, because I would go up on this ridge and I could just, I had like this great view, like my van's like, you know, maybe like 100, 150 yards away and just like a great view of just like this whole landscape in front of me of just like this bright blue, bright moon just like lighting up everything. And then it got to the point where it's just like crazy dark, like oh. scary dark. And I'm just like a little freaked out. And then when you're out there and then like I'm looking at my camera and I'm, and it's lit up and then I'm like I think I'm seeing things oh, yeah, move yeah. you know your yeah, eyes yeah, just yeah. play tricks on you and stuff and I'm just Whoa, like God. it was just freaking myself out yeah. and then as I'm, I'm driving home the border patrol are pulled over on the side of the road maybe even not like Wait, what time is this when you're going home this is the morning time so after the moon finally set and then I watched the sun rise and enjoyed that I'm like alright I'm gonna try to lay down and get a couple hours of sleep and I think it maybe got like an hour and a half to two hours, just kind of just like dozing, uh, yeah. dozing off, and then I'm just like, you know what, fuck it, I'm, I'm just ready to go back now. Like I'm, I've, I've got, you know, I kind of came out with with what I got. Like I, I wanted to go out for the lunar eclipse and everything, and I was still had like a lot of energy. Like I was still like up and ready. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, well, I can't really sleep, so like fuck it, I'll just head home. So it was probably like ten or eleven by the time I actually like got up and got out of there, and then so the border patrol had pulled over these three dudes like illegal immigrants like they they caught them they had their had them like all you know zip tied in the back and oh. had all their their stuff and i'm like shit i was like they could have easily walked over to me or anything like that not not that i think they would have like fucked with me or anything but who yeah. knows i mean you hear you hear night. yeah you hear crazy stories yeah but That's yeah weird. I, uh, it just freaked me out I'm like oh shit there's fucking guys out here wait so how far was that from where you were it was only a couple of miles like I, so once I got actually back out on the main road like heading back to San Diego these guys are the border patrol pulled over with these dudes I'm like oh shit dude crazy that is crazy but yeah I, I, just, I was just freaking myself out yeah, yeah. a little bit I'm like you could totally go out there completely fine and not even worry about anybody fucking with you yeah for months probably no but when you say it like that though like by yourself out where we when I'm thinking back to where we were yeah. it's like oh yeah totally like even we had like just a small group of people like you know a couple hundred yards away just obviously just camping or whatever but they'd pass us on their motorcycles and we would just kind of wave you know yeah kind of like it's almost reassuring it's like oh yeah you know there's, right there's exactly like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man we should have saved if only we could get those grow kits because we would have I thought about it I'm like this would have been an epic adventure especially on that. for like a second moon noon absolutely middle yes. of the week it would have been great yeah oh yeah damn yep that sucks <laughs> well you it, know what there's gonna, gonna be some cool event. yeah there would have been some cool events right? there's gotta be some cool moon events coming up down the down the pike well, I mean totally even the regular full moon is a great oh time, I but... you can't go wrong there I mean we're still I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking the beach adventure like the that's gonna happen adventure. it's gonna happen it's gotta happen we, if there's a will, happen. there's a way. It's gonna happen. We're gonna we find it. To and if we got to purchase it through a, a grower or something, we could. We'll make it happen. Yeah. Please, because that is so easy and cheap. Oh, uh, I know, and right? Convenient to do and have an amazing life changing and just beach, fucking phenomenal. Oh. Hiking on the beach. Oh God, I almost forgot about it. Even out here. I know. Oh, I've I thought, thought about it. it. I thought about it. <laughs> yeah, it'd be pretty just fucking cool. We'd have to like leave. I know, right? Yeah. If you didn't have to leave, it would yeah. be perfect. But uh, if we went up to, like, San Clemente, San Mateo. Yeah, yep. 
hike down to the beach. Oh, dude. So good. Damn. All right, so I, I was up quite, you know, most of the night just observing the night, and uh, uh, it was pretty cool. Some, like, military helicopters. There uh, a lot of military activity out there. They were doing a lot of exercise and shit. But I did see, off in the distance, these two very weird lights. They, they look like, f- like little fireballs in the light, in, in the sky. They were both on the same level kind of have like a a bit of a trail behind it so I'm thinking it must have been like flares or something but it was just weird how they were traveling and then and then they both go out at the same time like they both blink out but for maybe like four or five seconds they were all lit up and it had how like many? this two okay. two like weird fireballs so was there like a st- uh, a trail? It or wasn't like, like they were coming from the sky, like they were m- like a meteorites or something like that. It was like they were going parallel with with the horizon, okay. off in the distance, and they it was like at least it was pretty far off in the distance. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even be able to like say how many miles, but pretty far away. But I just it. It was just weird because I had my camera set up. It's it's facing towards the moon, and I'm just kind of like I've got it on a um, a time like a maybe like 15 seconds or something. I have the shutter open, so I've, I set that up, and then now I'm looking off in the distance, and I and then I just see these weird fireball lights, and I'm just like, hmm, that's weird. And I'll have to note that and uh, put that away for later. And weird. yeah, I wish yeah. I had my camera though set so I could have captured it, but. Very weird. Oh, I'm assuming it had to be military affiliated. Good DM but. Tom DeLonge. Uh, I know, right? Uh, hey, Tom, ball. what the fuck, bruh? What's going on? Fireballs. You Explain. Have. I'll be there in a, in a <laughs> second. I'm, a, I'm on the next ridge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on this. I'm on the next ridge. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sky is burning. (laughs) (laughs) You got it too? (laughs) Come meet my DOJ friend. (laughs) Secret machine. (laughs) Oh my god, that's hilarious. Hey, he went on Joe Rogan, and then, and then, what, a month, two later, all that stuff came out about UFO stuff, just like he said. Yep. Yep, yep. Now, whenever that stuff gets brought up. Who's laughing now? (laughs) Ugh. It is. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm glad you got to go out and Yeah, man. It, yeah, it was really great to just be wow. out there, you know, use the van, what I really intended it for, to do these fun little oh, adventures. I, was so and, I know uh, it was the middle of the week, but I was like so jealous. I'm like, God, that's right. Yeah, it was, it was like, the middle of the week. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I don't know why I thought it was the weekend, but yeah, the middle of the week. That's so cool. <sighs> it's good we gotta, times. We got to do moon, moon. Oh no, definitely. There's, yeah, part two, part three, part four. They're coming. 2018. Like said, who knows every, what's going to happen? Three months, I think is. Uh, I think that's a must, feeling. must do. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Recommendation. Absolutely, oh, brother. Okay. Let's do some recs. I'll kick it off. Yes, please, okay, please, please, so please. I've recommended this podcast before, and uh, I still do. But they did a series of podcasts very recently. Mm-hmm. Bring them up so I can write. Okay. So the podcast is The Crab Dudes. Ah, yes. Jay Larson, Ryan Stickler. Two guys, two comedians, uh, super funny dudes. And uh, they have a great podcast uh, where they interview a lot of other comics. Um, but they really like, um, they like a good story. So it's not all about just like cracking jokes and stuff. They bring on people and they like kind of encourage them to tell stories of a lot of growing up stories, a lot of like, and, and then they love those stories. Ooh, too. I like that. So anyway, a few weeks ago, they posted a live, and I'm gonna remind you about this. Oh please, because I really want you to listen to this. Okay. One. So they did a live in Houston with this guy. His name is Stephen uh, Cant- Steve Cantwell. I've, I that I recognize that name. Okay, so, and he is a comic. He's like a just a, kind of like a smaller time comic or whatever. And they met him. I'm pretty sure they met in an Uber somehow. They tell the story on the live podcast, 
and basically whoever wrote with him was like, uh, can you please come on our live podcast and uh, tell your story because it's amazing. You know, that's why. Yeah. Okay, so crowd piece uh, from December 11, 2017 is uh, live in Houston. So basically this guy, Steve Cantwell, I will just give you the basics. He's like, uh, he's in his 40s. He was, he grew up a member of the Mormon church. He defected from the Mormon church. He went into a janitorial business that he owned with another man. Uh, that man confessed to a murder. Uh, S- Steve Cantwell and his family ended up in witness protection in Alaska. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, let me tell you this. I'm hooked already. Let me tell you this. That is like 1% of this guy's story. Holy shit. He is, there are times during his interview where you're like, is this guy completely full of shit? But when you listen to him, he's so goddamn genuine. It's like, there's no way he could be making this shit up. He's got the craziest life story I've heard from anyone in my entire life. Wow. It's amazing. So listen to Steve Cantwell live in Houston. And then, so then they bring him back because it's that podcast was just so crazy. And he does a two-parter. Um, it, that they just posted uh, over the past month, starting in January. Wow! So they do a they do a live one with him, that, and they tell a story, and then they go back, and then they have him on the podcast, and they do like a really long podcast. They break up into two places. Ooh! Uh, that gets even, hell yeah. He's just he, he's like an endless book of of life stories wow. that includes. And I don't want to give too much away. Okay. But it includes a Salvia story, which is pertinent to this podcast. Hell yeah. Podcast okay. That comes out of nowhere. And that alone is, is it, it's still, his story still fucks with me. Like, and it, you can tell it fucks with them. Like, how could that happen? How could it be? Like, it's insane. Like, I even added him on Instagram and then messaged him and was like, please get in touch with Shane Moss to tell your Salvia, more about your Salvia story because it's, Unlike anything you've ever heard. So, wow. Boom. Oh my I've been gosh. To like, but I wanted to tell you in person because I was yeah, like, yeah. I didn't want to just be like, hey, check this out. You right. Know? Yeah. But listen to the live one first. Ooh, that's your introduction shit. to him, and then listen to the other one. And, he, and he's a great. He's a comedian, and he used to be also a radio broadcaster. So he's very good on the podcast. Perfect. Like, he's he's engaging. He knows how to you know tell a good story. Yeah. So it's but it's in no way whatsoever. Are you like, oh, this guy's just fucking with us? Like, he's just so genuine. It's it's hard to say. So, well, boom. get out of here so I can download this podcast <laughs> yeah. and listen to. Yeah. Holy shit, dude! Right. I'm sold. I don't yeah. even I don't even know how I can tell that with any recommendation. Yeah, I was just been, oh like, man, sitting on it. So, dude, I'm glad you sat on that and shared it. Yeah. Damn, I'm definitely gonna check it out. Yeah, like Fuck I've even yeah. listened to their their interview with him again. So re- it's, recommend it's, listen to the Houston, the live version yeah. first, and then okay, because perfect. Because gives you like a good paint, good intro of into one. Okay. And then the the one they do in person, he just gets into more detail about certain things that had come up in the last one, but also stuff that just is, they just literally like he'll just mention something offhand, and they'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa. yeah, Tell us about let's this. dive yeah. deep, yeah. So I I know for a fact oh. that this guy will be on again too. All right, cool. To get, get more into it. And I wouldn't be surprised if he makes the podcast circuit. He's just such an interesting guy. Right, yeah. Anyway. Is he an uh, East Coast uh, comedian, like New York, or is he... Uh... So now he's... Um, now I think he lives in Texas. Okay. Oh, oh, oh right, yeah. So if he's in Houston, he's probably... Uh... But he, uh, he's from Utah. He was in right. the Mormon church. Then he was in Florida. Then he was in Alaska. Then he was in... I'll just say this. He was kind of in Texas, and that will make sense. Okay, 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 perfect. He kind of lives in Texas. Okay, all right. There you go. I'm just going to plant that Perfect. Seed. Okay. seed planted. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. All right, I, I, I don't know if I can top That's that. That's right. But, uh, yeah, I'll just recommend uh, an EDM artist who I'm uh, just now diving into, and he'll be at Beyond Wonderland, and I uh, saw him at OMFG, and that's Kazo. Came 
came out with an EP called Overload. It's really, really good. It kind of reminds me uh, like uh, uh, like Linkin Park mixed with EDM, mixed oh, okay. with like other like m poppy punk type stuff. Like I, It's like a weird mixture. It's good. Yeah, it, yeah it's, a, he, it's, it's an inter interesting album and it's uh, high energy and just uh, it's a good album. So I definitely would recommend that. I just downloaded it uh, literally today, like right before you came over, and I was listening to it. So um, I'm still yet to really dive into it, but so far, pristine. Nice. And I'm digging, I'm digging what he's putting out, and I'm looking forward to seeing him at Beyond Wonderland. Cool. So yeah, that's my r r r r recommendation, dude. But yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to check out uh, the Crab Feast. Yeah, yeah. Totally yeah. stoked. And Steve Cantwell, correct? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Steve. And they nicknamed him Steve Can't End Well because <laughs> right. of the, the nature of his stories. Oh, man. Yeah. I love it. Hilarious. All, All right. right. Great podcast. Very good. Very good indeed. <laughs> bye bye boy. <laughs> Shit. I don't know. It's in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw my memories away Now I feel I'm done And I am cursed by every day Till my time is gone I've never felt this way before And now I know this all for sure I won't forget your last betray I'll never forget this day Hey
us betray I'll never forget this day